The Mughal Empire was founded in Kabul in 1526 by Babur Shah and it ruled over almost all of India until it was taken over by the British. Babur Shah, whose full name was Zahuruddin Muhammad Babur, was the only one who laid the foundations of this grand empire and his lineage can be traced back to Timur on his father's side and to Genghis Khan on his mother's side. Babur's father was ruling a small Timurid principality in Kabul, but when he died in an accident in 1495, Babur, who was only 12 years old at the time, took over. He ruled over this principality for 10 years, and when he turned 22, he took advantage of the weakening Timurid Empire and established the independent Mughal Empire in Kabul. After dealing with several rebellions in Kabul, he managed to expand his territory to Peshawar and Kandahar by 1522. During this time, he also took his 13-year-old son Humayun along with him on his campaigns. He managed to conquer the western territories of Delhi by 1525 and his army had grown to 1,000 soldiers. However, as his empire grew, his army proved to be insufficient and so he began his campaigns in India in 1525. In 1526, he marched towards the Delhi Sultanate with an army of 12,000 soldiers and defeated the 100,000 strong Delhi army. He captured Delhi and then Agra which led to the end of the Delhi Sultanate and he established the Mughal Empire in the same year. From then on, he ruled his empire from Agra as the capital and although he continued to go on campaigns, he returned to Agra due to his deteriorating health in 1529. He realized that he was going to die when his health continued to worsen, so he called upon his advisors and appointed his son Humayun as his successor. He died in Agra in 1530. Although the Mughal Empire is referred to as Mongol in Western sources, this belief is not based on reality. After Islam, it was a tradition among Turks to name the state after its founder and Babur Shah didn't want to be known as a Mongol and preferred to be recognized as a Turk. In 1530, Muhammad Humayun ascended to the throne and faced significant challenges in preserving and expanding the territories his father Babur Shah had won in India. The root of Humayun's problems was the power struggle he engaged in with his brothers. According to the Timurid system, which they inherited, Humayun divided the administration of his country among his four brothers, but this internal turmoil continued until 1540. This internal conflict not only caused significant damage to Babur's army, but also, in 1540, Afghanistan's attack on the Babur Empire left Humayun in a difficult situation. As if the internal turmoil that exhausted Babur's army was not enough, half of the army was slaughtered by the Afghans when they panicked and retreated during the conflict. In the territories lost, a new Afghan Indian mixed state was established in 1540 under the name of the Sur Empire. After his defeat, Humayun sought refuge in Kabul but was rejected by his brother Cameron, who controlled Kabul. Helpless and losing his throne, Humayun lived as a refugee for a while before seeking a refuge with the Safavid ruler Shah Tahmasp in 1544. When Shah Tahmasp told Humayun that he could restore his empire if he accepted Shiism, Humayun accepted the offer in 1545. In early 1545, with a well-prepared Babur Persian mixed army, Humayun besieged Kabul. This siege, which lasted for eight years and witnessed bloody clashes, ended with Humayun's victory in 1553. After Cameron was captured, Humayun ordered him to be blinded so that he would never ascend to the throne again. Humayun's victory marked a turning point in Babur's history and is considered the second founding date of the Babur Empire in 1553. After living in an exile for about 13 years, Humayun regained his lost throne with the help of Shah Tahmasp and continued his conquests in North India. In 1555, he defeated the Afghan army and managed to regain the territories up to Delhi. However, his second reign was short-lived. In 1556, Humayun fell down the stairs of Delhi Fort's library and died two days later. After his sudden death, it was unclear who would succeed him and his family kept his death a secret for 17 days. 
Eventually, it was decided that his 13-year-old son Akbar Shah would succeed him. However, when Akbar ascended the throne, his father had only managed to save a small part of the empire and left his son with an unorganized, disorderly and chaotic empire. Famine and diseases such as the plague were rampant in Delhi and the northwestern provinces of India and many people died due to these reasons. The Sir Army General Hamu had gathered local forces around him and established a strong defense in Agra. In addition, the Portuguese had settled on the western coast and became the first European colonial power to set foot in India. When Akbar Shah was enthroned at the age of 13, his country was in such a chaotic state. Due to his young age, Akbar couldn't manage the affairs of state, so he left the administration to Bayram Khan, an experienced commander and a close friend of his father. With the help of Bayram Khan, the objections to Akbar Shah were eliminated and his reign was secured. Bayram Khan, who revived the empire with his intelligence and skills, won the second battle of Panipat and ended the Sur Empire. He then attacked the western part of Bengal Sultanate and captured the important city of Pataliputra. Bayram Khan, who performed his duties with great loyalty and faith, was at his height of his power. In 1559, he conquered Sindh and connected to Babur Empire to the ocean. However, he was unsuccessful in his eastern campaign that he launched afterward. Both his unsuccessful results and Akbar Shah's influence from his new nurse caused Bayram Khan to start falling out of favor in late 1559. Of course, the reason for his fall wasn't only this. Although the household was Sunni, Bayram Khan was Shia. The dynasty's prominent members began to oppose the fact that a Shia person was becoming so influential over the ruler. In addition, Bayram Khan's excessive attention to people of his own sect became one of the most important factors in his fall. For these reasons, Akbar Shah began to increasingly doubt Bayram Khan's loyalty. In 1560, his wet nurse Lady Mahim went to Akbar Shah and told him that Bayram Khan would remove him from the throne and replace him. Here, Akbar Shah, who couldn't tolerate this, dismissed Bayram Khan and sent him to exile to Mecca in late 1560. However, while passing through the Catherworld region during his exile, Bayram Khan was attacked by an Afghan and lost his life. Despite being 20 years old by this time, Akbar Shah couldn't fully take on the responsibility of the state. Therefore, his wet nurse, Lady Mahim, became the primary decision maker in the administration. The two year period of Lady Mahim's rule was referred to by many historians as the women's state or women's government. However, the division of power among Lady Mahim's relatives during this period caused things to spiral out of control. Finally, Akbar Shah realized this and dismissed his foster mother and her relatives, taking the reins of the Mughal Empire himself in 1562. During the period of internal turmoil, many local people who had fled to neighboring countries returned to India and pledged their allegiance to Akbar Shah when they saw the stability brought by the young emperor. After overcoming the chaos in the early years of his reign, Akbar Shah set out on a campaign to central India in 1564. With the conquest of the Marwar and Malwa principalities in the Rajput region that same year, priceless treasures fell into Akbar's hands. The next target was another Rajput state, Mewar. Wanting to be absolute ruler of the central India, Akbar Shah marched with a large army towards Mewar in September 1567. Akbar Shah besieged the Chitor Fort, one of the city's most important fortresses, for four months, using cannons to pound the fortress walls. Although the 25,000 strong Rajput army defending the fortress fought bravely to the last man, they couldn't escape being annihilated by Akbar Shah's powerful army. The Chito fort was finally captured by the Mughal army in February 1568. With the fall of Chitor, many other Rajput rulers were forced to submit to Akbar and Mewar was completely taken over by him. Around the same time, the Sultan Gandhia wanted to come under Akbar Shah's rule, so his territory was included in the Mughal Empire. After this conquest, Akbar Shah returned to Agra to rest for a while and then set out for Gurajat in 1572. As one of North India's richest countries, Gurajat was strategically important because of its location on the sea and as a refuge for foreigners. 
Akbar Shah's father, Humayun, had also wanted to conquer this country but didn't live long enough. For all these reasons, Akbar Shah attached their importance to the conquest of Gujarat. Akbar Shah and his army reached Surat after a month-long journey without encountering any resistance. After 45 days of occasional clashes, Gujarat was completely conquered by Akbar Shah in February 1573. With the conquest of Gujarat, the Mughal Empire began to benefit from the rich trade passing through Surat and other western ports. At the same time, close relations were established with Portuguese, who were very successful in maritime trade, and state revenue began to increase significantly. Akbar Shah's next target was Bengal, a sparsely populated country with wide plains irrigated by the Ganges River. The Muslim king of Bengal, Suleiman Karani, officially accepted Akbar Shah's sovereignty without fighting and established friendly relations with him. However, after his death at the end of 1573, his son Dawud refused to recognize Akbar's rule and expelled Mughal officials. In response, Akbar Shah marched against the Bengal ruler, capturing Patna and Hajipur in a short time. After about three years of wars and rebellions, the Mughal army conquered all of Bengal in 1576. In 1586, taking advantage of the unrest caused by the bad governance of the Kashmir ruler, Akbar Shah conquered Kashmir that same year and declared it the summer capital of his empire. Now that he had complete control over northern India, Akbar Shah turned his attention to the Deccan Sultanates, including Ahmed Nagar, Bijapur, Bidar, and Galconda. Akbar Shah, who was the greatest conqueror of the Mughal Empire, also took his place in history as a reformist. He approached all religions with tolerance and even created a new religion called Dini Ilahi, which means oneness of God, by merging religions such as Islam, Christianity, Zoroastrianism, Hinduism, and Buddhism with the aim of ending religious conflicts. As you've just seen, he also managed to make the Turkish Indian state of Babur, which he conquered almost all of India, one of the greatest states of the time. After Akbar Shah's death, his son Jahangir Shah ascended to the throne of the Mughal Empire. When Jahangir came to power, the Babur Empire was one of the most powerful states of the time. However, due to his comfortable upbringing and wealth, he didn't want to add any new conquests to those assured by his father. During his reign, Portugal, the Netherlands and England landed in India and began to exploit it by establishing commercial companies in eastern India after making deals with Jihangir. Meanwhile, in 1622, the Safavid ruler Shah Abbas besieged Kandahar and quickly captured it. Jihangir Shah sent his son Jihan to recapture Kandahar, but he couldn't succeed against the superior Safavid forces and had to withdraw. In this period, with Jihangir Shah falling ill and withdrawing from the state affairs, a struggle for the throne began between his sons Nur Jihan and Prince Jihan. After the throne battles that lasted from 1622 to 1627, Prince Jihan emerged victorious and he didn't hesitate to have his brother Nur Jihan killed. According to the sources, Jangir Shah, who suffered from asthma, lived in Kashmir in his final years. He died on the way to Lahore in October 1627. When Shah Jihan ascended to the throne after his father's death, he set out to recapture Kandahar, which had been lost previously. Due to the ongoing war between the Safavids and the Ottomans, Kandahar governor Ali Mirdan handed over the city to Shah Jihan without fighting. In 1631, he built the world-famous Taj Mahal in Agra after his young wife, Begum, died. In 1636, he captured all of Ahmed Nagar and put Golconda under tribute. Although he started a campaign against the Bukhara Khanate in 1646, he had to march towards Bengal after the Portuguese seized the Bengal coast. He looted the city of Hooghly, which was established by the Portuguese, killing some of them and taking the rest as prisoners to Agra. During Shah Jihan's reign, the Babur territories expanded to nearly 3 million square kilometers, close to modern-day Indian borders. However, when Shah Jian fell ill and was confined to bed in 1657, his sons began to fight for the throne and Kandahar was once again captured by the Safavids. Aurangzeb, 
who won the throne battle between his brothers, killed him and imprisoned his father in Agrafort, then declared himself their emperor. Marathas, who were the rulers of the Deccan Sultanates, emerged as a new threat to Mughal rule during Aurangzeb's reign. He sent his army against the Marathas and managed to control them after a series of battles. However, in 1680, the attacks resumed and the Marathas invaded Mughal territories to collect taxes forcibly from the people. This situation angered Aurangzeb, who started moving towards Bikapur himself to manage the operations in the south. He besieged Bikapur in 1684 and captured it completely in 1686. However, the Maratha attacks couldn't be stopped and the region couldn't be effective control. The wars with the Marathas also severely damaged the state's economy. In 1688, Aurangzeb captured Golconda and Mysore, becoming the emperor who reached the widest borders of the Mughal Empire. However, he couldn't show the same success against the Marathas and they occupied Mughal territories up to the north of Surat until 1707. Aurangzeb, who ruled the Mughal throne for about half a century, expanding the Babur territories to 4 million square kilometers before he passed away at the age of 88 on March 3rd, 1707. He is also known as the last great emperor of the Mughal Empire because the short-lived emperors who came after him couldn't show any presence against the Maratha attacks and the empire lost territories day by day. First, the Marathas seized the south of the country, then Bengal became an independent sultanate again. In 1739, the rest of the country, including Kabul, was occupied by the Afghans, and then the Rajput region became a separate sultanate. Starting from 1765, the British occupation of India, which began in Calcutta, marked the beginning of the end for the Mughal Empire. The British seized all Indian territories until 1858 and established the Indian colonial state. Thus, the Babur Empire, which once ruled all of India, took its place among the dusted pages of history in 1858. Thanks for watching. See you in the next video.